Hey everyone, welcome back to Manga Storian, the channel where I sit around and just talk about what I love in the world of manga. I have a channel called Comic Story and I talk about comic books. I wanted to make Manga Story and that's what we do here. And once a week, sometimes twice a week, I like to go through old manga and give you my reactions reading it for the first time. Today we're going to be talking about One Piece Post Any's Lobby, which is chapters 431 to 441. To clarify the same spiel I have to give at the beginning of every one of these videos, I am actually reading the manga, not watching the anime, which means that I'm having a different experience from those of you who have watched the anime. Also, this is just going to be my notes and things that I enjoyed and stood out to me. Now, let's go ahead and get into Post Any's Lobby. This particular segment of chapters was very much hyped up for me. Dan told me that Post Any's Lobby was going to be the greatest thing ever. Any's Lobby itself was amazing, but Post Any's Lobby, that, that is going to speak to you. You're going to cry so many tears. It's so heartwarming. And it wasn't. I'm not even trying to mess around. It didn't talk to me in that way. Kind of, and I'll explain in a minute. So let's go into what actually happened in Post Any's Lobby, a short 10 chapter segment here. So now I do think part of the reason is Post Any's Lobby was really hyped up as being a significant moment in the manga. While you guys might not think you're spoiling something, if you tell someone to expect powerful speeches in chapter 398, or that when you reach 439, it's gonna really get to you, that does set a mindset that I'm going to enter a certain segment of the storyline and I'm going to be very emotionally attached to what's going on. So you, you almost get overhyped as to what is supposed to be happening. And I do feel that that is what happened to me at Post Any's Lobby. But I did correct the problem. And we'll talk about that once I explain what happened. So Post Any's Lobby is really broken down into three significant moments which is a lot for the 10 chapters that it takes place in. First off, we have to deal with Frankie joining the crew. Now, I already knew Frankie was going to join the crew. I was not expecting Frankie to join the crew butt naked and for them to show us Frankie's butt for like four chapters long. Basically, it's revealed that Frankie does want to join the, join the Straw Hats, but he won't leave his Frankie family, family on the island. He has to be convinced to join the crew or told to join the crew. Iceberg even states that if Luffy asks him, he won't be able to say no. What it devolves into is in a fun little adventure in which they steal Frankie's Speedo and they have him running through the town butt naked, which already was hilarious and I really loved it and it kind of gave me a vibe as to how Frankie's going to be treated on the crew. But what really was like the cherry on the top was when they handed the Speedo off to Luffy. Luffy's running on the top of the of the, the rooftops. Frankie's in the bottom chasing Luffy for the Speedo. And they're not yelling about the Speedo or what they need to do. He's just like, what did you think about this thing on the ship that I built? And Luffy's like, oh, I really loved that. And this was really cool. And, you know, Frankie's like, oh, did you see this thing I did? And it just gave me a vibe that this is going to be their friendship moving forward. That... They're just going to hold conversations while everything is going on, which is already kind of the vibe I got from Frankie, where he just kind of ignores a lot of what's happening just to have his own moments, his own discussions and stuff like that. So I really did enjoy that. I also loved the constant comments of that pervert Frankie's running around naked. All of it was very comical. I, I, when I first saw Frankie, I saw him in One Piece Red, so it's his post-future version, and I really didn't like his design. And then when he joined up with the crew at the beginning of Water 7... Oh, so much has gone on. At the beginning of Water 7, I still didn't really like his design. The Speedo guy with like a Hawaiian shirt and bulky forearms, whatever. But Frankie's personality is really growing on me. I, I like the character a lot. Design's still not one of my favorites, but I really like the character a lot. So I'm, I'm happy that Frankie's joining the crew. This eventually leads to Frankie getting on the boat, and then we head over there. I don't know if it was before the Frankie moment or not, so I'm going to talk about it now. Another big reveal that happens in Post Any's Lobby is Luffy's family. Okay, so I've had the theory up to this point that Goldie Roger was actually Luffy's dad. And I, I mean, I figured there'd be some excuse or some reasoning or whatever. Uh, no, I was completely wrong and we discovered that in Post Any's Lobby. First off, we have his grandfather shows up and his grandfather explains like... He has the same attitude as Luffy, so even the crew is like, oh, now it explains a little bit about Luffy, which I thought was hilarious. The grandfather shows up, but the grandfather just, like, drops who Luffy's dad is. He's this big revolutionary criminal, Dragon, who we did see briefly all the way back at something with Smoker or Smoke. I, I forget where it was, but it did happen. And I just love the way it's done. Oh, yeah, your dad, Dragon. And everyone's like, what? 
That's Luffy's dad. It was so nonchalantly dropped that I actually really liked that. Like, it was like when Oda was writing, he's like, it's not actually that big a deal. Uh, I made him his dad. I just couldn't think of a moment to mention that. So we're just going to have his grandfather say it offhandedly. That's honestly how I felt about the reveal. And I loved the fact that they did that. There was no big reveal, no buildup, nothing like that. Grandfather showed up and he's like, Grandpa, grandson. And they just have their back and forth for a moment. Then he brings up his dad. And I was just like, okay. I love that. That's great. And the grandfather decides to let Luffy and the crew go because he's the grandfather and he doesn't want to have to arrest them. He steps away. So after the bit, the third thing happens, we come back to the grandfather. The grandfather gets sent back by the government to attack Luffy. And I love the excuse of, well, they said I can't let you get away. So I'm not. And he's just throwing cannonballs at Luffy. Just It was great. And he's hucking them. I love the surprise in the crew. But I also... During this, we also find out a little bit more about Shanks. Now, Shanks, this is like the last chapter. I, I wanna, I'm going to jump back earlier to the Usopp stuff. For all of you who are like, you skipped Usopp. I didn't. That's the biggest moment, and I have a lot to say about that. Anyway, we're going to go to the ending here. For like two chapters, Shanks arrives at Whitebeard's boat. And he just steps on the boat and drops everyone. So what kind of power does Shanks have? Because he can just show up. And either he's super powerful or he didn't bathe. In the world of One Piece, the didn't bathe part could work. I got a feeling it's more about his power. Because I did see him go insane in One Piece Red, to which I asked my friend at the time. For those who don't know, One Piece Red is actually my introduction to One Piece. I saw that with a friend and then wanted to start reading it. I've never I'd done anything else with One Piece before that. But in One Piece Red, Shanks cuts loose. And I asked my buddy, who is this Shanks guy? And he's like, oh, you'll never find out. We'll never, you'll never, we'll never get more information on Shanks. So knowing how powerful he is in One Piece Red and then seeing him get on the boat and people just drop before him, that was awesome. And I really want to know more about Shanks. I'm assuming we get something at some point. But the, we find out Shanks is there to tell Whitebeard to call Ace off of the battle with Blackbeard. That doesn't go well. So we eventually cut to the Ace fight and we get to see the Fire Fire Fruit versus Blackbeard's Darkness, Darkness Fruit or Darkness Fruit, whatever his is, Dark Dark Fruit. Blackbeard's powers are insane, Ace's powers are insane, and I'm more dis disappointed that it really didn't resolve. That it just kind of like got left hanging. Like, they're fighting it out, and now they're done. The Shank, Whitebeard, Blackbeard, Ace stuff, really hyped to see where that's going to go. Because they've been, because between the big arcs, we've been having these moments where we get to see more of like Ace looking for Blackbeard, or we get to see more about who the world government has working for them. So I'm assuming all of this is coming together at some point, like all of this background story building and world building that we're doing. But now let's talk about the biggest moment. And I'm assuming this is the moment that a lot of you were like, it's going to cause tears. You're going to be so upset. You're going to be so happy. So we cut to Zoro, and he makes a very strong point. We can't let Usopp come back unless he apologizes. You can't just set the precedent that someone can just leave willy-nilly whenever they're just in a mood and come back to the crew. And I agree with that. Zoro was 100% right. You can't let... Like, they're a pirate crew. They're, they're working buddies. They're friends. But you can't just, like, throw a tantrum, leave the crew, and come back. That would be actually very unsatisfying for the Usopp arc. So after everything that happened with Usopp and the fact that he had to hide his face as Sniper King and all that other stuff, we find out that he's basically acting... He wants to do exactly what Zoro doesn't want him to do, which is just show back up and assume nothing went wrong. Like, nothing happened, he's been here the whole time, stuff like that. So we got him running to the boat. This is at the moment that the grandfather's throwing cannonballs at their new boat, which is an awesome new boat, by the way. I, I didn't comment on the new boat. The new boat was incredible. Loved the new boat. He shows back up, and he's doing exactly what they said. Zoro's pretending not to hear him. Luffy's pretending not to hear him. They're obviously pretending. They're getting attacked. There's the chance that they didn't know, but yeah, they're pretty much pretending not to hear him. And then we have Usopp realizing that they are, in fact, leaving him. That he, he's done enough damage, that he is being left behind. He's not welcome back. Usopp, in tears, finally apologizes to everyone. And then Luffy, as soon as he heard that, stretches his arm all the way back to the shore, grabs Usopp, pulls him back on the boat, and they're off on the next adventure to Fishman Island. Which I, I thought would be the next arc... I looked at the name, because I always look at the name of the arcs to see what chapters I'm reading. Man, they don't get to that island for a long time, do they? Anyway, we're get, we'll cut to that later. 
<laughs> like, what the heck? If you're wondering why I look at the names of the arcs, it's just so I know what to stop at and give you guys these videos. I don't do any other spoilers beyond looking at the names of the arcs. I assumed that this was the moment that I was supposed to be really sad and happy and it was going to be like overjoyed. And I was. I was really happy to see Usopp's apology, Luffy just immediately forgiving him, pulling him back on the boat. It was awesome. But it did not draw tears out of me, like the Robin moment, or like the Robin moment, or like the Robin, yeah, just the Robin moment. Since this was a shorter chapter, and I knew our video would be shorter, I decided to do something that I don't normally do. Watch some of the anime. Now, I said it a little while ago that I might start watching some of the anime segments because, like, the moments, a lot of the super emotional moments don't hit the same in manga. The reason for that is simple. You don't have the voice acting, you don't have the demotion, you don't have the music. All of that is in your head. And I can get really upset about things, like I said on my story of being on the plane when I read One Piece with Robin's origin, with the right music and stuff like that, but if the music's not matching up, I'm not getting the right emotion. So I thought it'd be interesting to watch Robin's origin in dub, because I wanted to see the Gear 2 reveal and the Gear 3 reveal in dub. And then I would watch, and then that also made me want to watch Robin's emotion in the sub. I watched that same episode, and since that that was really interesting to see the emotion displayed in the show, and everyone told me post any's lobby would be emotional. Let's watch Usopp's moment. Let's watch that moment and see if that sells it for me. Now, Robin's moments in the anime dub were. I watched all three episodes and. The music, the attitude, the voice acting, it was so spot on. It was so good. I was already knowing where it's going. Uh, the tears were welling back up. I didn't go full-blown crying because, you know, I knew where it was going to go. But there was definitely a few moments where I'm like, man. But knowing a lot of people are also, there's always that dub versus sub debate. I was like, well, let me watch the sub. Let me see what the, 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 the Japanese actress did for this moment. And that was even more emotional. I don't know, like, just ha the, the emotion displayed in the I Want to Live scene was just so powerful, both dub and sub, and even in the manga. It was such a powerful scene to come straight after her origin, and the whole thing about you're not meant to have, you're not meant to not have friends. You're not meant to be alone. It was such a great scene, and I loved it, and this is the first time I've ever read an anime watched the scene in dub, then re-watched it in sub just because I wanted to see the emotion across the board. Which to me says something about One Piece because I've never done that, ever. I read comic books all the time, I read manga all the time, I watch anime all the time. Normally, if I've read the manga, I half ignore the anime. I'll watch it in the background a lot of times, but I won't, like, I... Uh, My Hero is the best example. I read My Hero all the way up to where we are with the current chapters, and <laughs> those current chapters, not good. They'll probably be amazing in the anime. They're not good as a manga right now, I'll tell you that. But when I watch My Hero, in the, it's more of a background thing because I know exactly what's going to happen, which is part of the reason I didn't jump into watching One Piece. I can read faster than I can watch, and One Piece is very close to its manga, just like most anime to manga translations. But this one... It just hits different. It really does. And I've taken to watching a lot of key scenes in the anime at this point. Key fight sequences, transformations like Gear 2, Gear 3. You know, watching the, the moments with like Robin and stuff like that. Just, just seeing the clips, the subs, the dubs. There's something about One Piece that is just resonating with me that I never expected with it. That is also what I did with Usopp. And I will say, watching that scene... The music, the emotion coming out of Luffy's actor and uh, Usopp's actor, uh, it's just so much, uh, it's just so, it just, I didn't watch this one in sub, I only watched it in dub, but it definitely hit different than reading it in the manga. It was so much more emotional. Now, nowhere near the levels that people were hyping this scene up for. And like I said, I feel that that was almost like a, I got spoiled the hype levels of it. So I was expecting it to be so much more powerful, especially coming out of Robin's origin and the I want to live moment. And then going into Usopp, people are like, no, post Eni's lobby is peak. And I'm like, how is it going to top this? I don't think it did. But it's still a great moment. I don't want you guys to think that I'm bashing post Eni's lobby at all. It was a great quick read. Nice decompression after Eni's lobby. I loved that. I love that it focused on more of the world building, that it focused on getting the crew back to just like, absolute zero of everyone's on the crew. They're all happy. And we got a new crew member. 
I loved it. It was great. And I'm super excited for whatever this thriller bark arc that's next is coming up because like, we, I'm assuming we can only really go up at this point because please don't tell me it's not. But anyway, I'm excited to see where it's going to go. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we are right now. We're going into thriller bark. I think it was the next one. Uh, and then we're, that's about 40 chapters. So we might break that into two videos or we might break that into one video. I'm not sure. We're also, uh, after talking to your guys' comments, well, reading your guys' comments, talking to people on the Discord. By the way, Manga Story shares the Discord with Comic Story right now. If you guys want me to make a new one, I will, but I get very... My ADD does not let me track the amount of discords we have. Okay, we have one for like every major channel and I can't track them properly. But if you ever want to talk to me, just ping me. It's fine. But anyway, um, so we're going to be, I'm going to be wrapping up the Dragon Ball Super stuff. I'm going to read that this week along with this, the Thriller Bark stuff. And then uh, it was recommended that I go into Black Clover. The debate came down to Naruto or Black Clover. I think we're doing Black Clover. That sounds more at my alley. I've never really been a night. The whole concept of Naruto has never really resonated with me, and I don't know why. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's manga storian. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time right here. And seriously, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for continuing to watch this and helping me grow this manga channel. It's finally getting to where I'm happy with it. And I really want to just keep reading manga and talking to you about it. So thank you.